We talked about, we've been talking about Pentecost for about four weeks now, and uh, Bobby started it, and uh, so he's here tonight, hopefully he never finished it, okay? But uh, how many of you, and I want you to be honest with you, how many of you have at least learned something about another denomination maybe that you did not know, or you've been educated in that area, you're, you're getting closer to the Lord? How many of y'all can say, yep, Ryan, I'm, I'm getting this stuff, you know? And uh, so we've got some more, a few more things to do. Uh, but tonight, I want to finish up this Pentecost, what they believe, um, and we'll go from there. Okay, last week we talked about a few things, eternal security, baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, marriage and divorce, and we talked about the public school activities. This week, I'm going to run through here real quick. If you got a question, raise your hand. If not, I'm going to be like an auctioneer up here tonight, okay? So... Um, uh, just bear with me, all right? Because I, I really want to get this in your spirit tonight. Um, they, a lot of the Pentecostal, the majority of the Pentecostal churches believe in a word that I believe in also that does not get taught on very much in churches no more. It's called holiness. Now, I want you all to listen to me just for a moment. I say this quite often, but I want this to really, really, really get into your heart and into your spirit tonight. Because one thing that is missing, one thing that is missing in the church and in the body of believers today is the lack of fear for Christ. That's right. We, 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 we do not give the Lord reverence and fear that like He deserves. We, we do what we want and say what we want and act like we want and we think that, that God is a Walmart God or a Hallmark God, that you go in there and just confess it and still live like, you know what? Let me show you something. We serve a just God. Amen. We, it rains on the just and the unjust. Here's what I have noticed in Brian King's Baptist life. Normally, when I get in trouble, I get myself in trouble. Normally, I do things in my own personal walk with the Lord that brings on consequences of a, of a sin, of, of, of whatever it may be, I bring, I don't know how y'all do it, but I, this is me. I bring on a lot on myself. I really do. I, I bring a lot of stuff on myself. So tonight I want to show you, I personally believe in the word of holiness. I know God does too. In the month of February of 2013, God has been pouring out His Spirit. I'm going to do a series of sermons called The Highway to Holiness. The highway to holiness. I'm going to have stop signs. I'm going to have yield signs. No U-turn signs. I'm going to have signs all over the church. And it's going to get your spirit. It's going to be fun, but it's going to be a word I really believe that God has given me to give the church. I personally believe that no, that people do not fear the Lord like they should. Amen. I really believe that. I really believe that we got a younger generation. If we as, as adults don't grab them and say, listen. Thus saith the Lord, and that is wrong, and this is right, and you shouldn't do that, and you don't need to go there, you need to put clothes on, you need to do this, you don't need to talk like that, you don't need to be Facebooking like that, you don't need to be listening to that kind of music like that. We as parents have got to stand up and train our children, and thus saith the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. That, that's a true word right there. We've got we to gotta get back, and you can call it old Pentecostal, you can call it old time religion, you can call it whatever you want. I just call it the, the, the Holy Spirit. I just call the reverence of God is what I call it. I just really believe why God is honoring us. It's because I really believe that we respect, we honor, and we welcome the Spirit into our services. Yes. Before you even got here tonight, there was three people. I won't mention names because they don't want me to mention them. They prayed over every pew in this, in this church. Everywhere. Where you're sitting at right now was prayed for before you even entered in. And I don't know if people look at us and say, man, that's just silliness. What's going to happen is going to happen. See, I, I just disagree with you. I Amen. believe that we've got the power of God in our life that we can, we can welcome His presence in. And, and God will, God loves the, the He inhabits the praises of His people. Amen. Amen. God loves when you raise your hand and say, God, I surrender all. Yeah. God loves when you give Him praise. But I really believe, everybody like, likes to make fun of the Pentecostal. Because when you say Pentecostal, everybody says, well, you relate tongues to that. I hear it all the time. That's no truth to that. That is no truth to that. I think you've got to know what you're talking about before you speak over it. And I've been there, yes, there's been some things out of, out of order. But how many of you know there's been things out of order in a Baptist church too? Amen. 
Yeah. I've been to business meetings in a Baptist church where people cuss. Yeah. I have. I've been in business meetings before. Ernie, you know, sure we talked about that today. Been in, in churches before. I'm like, I don't want no part of that. Man, if that's how Christians act, I, I just, Lord, I don't want no part of that. But I'm telling you, when you surrender your way of thinking and your body and your activity over the Lord, He'll show you great and mighty things. He really will. Uh, so, the Pentecostal, I can relate to them. I can relate to a lot of things the Baptists do. I can relate to a lot of things that a lot of people do. But the bottom line is, we all need Jesus. Amen. We all need to be closer. We all need to give Him reverence. And all these holiness teachings that I have been giving you, do I agree with them all? No. Watch this. I don't agree with myself half the time. How about y'all? How many of y'all make yourself mad? <laughs> Come on now. You make yourself mad. You know, I can't believe I said that. Yeah, y'all, that means, yeah, that's right, preach it, boy. That's right. But we all do. I don't even breathe myself half the time. But what I'm saying is we can't get caught up, I say this all the time, in a denomination. I am a Southern Baptist pastor. The reason why is because I support what they believe. I do. But also, I believe in a lot of the Pentecostal teachings. I really do. They got some good teachings behind them. And Bobby done such a great job in telling us some things and cleared up the air on maybe some things that they taught that really wasn't right, but he, he took it wrong. But praise God, he gave you discernment. There's something that they call in the holiness teaching, they call, uh, they say, they talk about sleeveless shirts. In your handout, I, I wrote this down. Uh, sleeveless shirts would be wrong to wear without mandating how long the sleeve should be. Bobby, you mentioned, you talked about that, that pretty much when they had the least come down to the elbow. I have even seen people during the summer it'd be 95 degrees outside. It's all the way down here, you know. And I started thinking about that. My papa did that too. My papa was a strong man. He's about six foot four, about 300 pounds, and he was a well of a man. And he'd be out in the tobacco field with a long sleeve shirt on and stuff like that. But they said it keep them cooler. I don't know if it, if it does or not. But anyway, um, I remember my papa wearing long sleeve shirts too. Um, but uh, most Pentecostal churches mandate sleeves to be, no, to be no shorter than the elbow. And so it can't be shorter than the elbow. It's got to come down. It's got to cover the skin. Uh, they talk about shorts. Shorts are no, normally taught against for both sexes. You didn't see a, a little Pentecostal girl wearing shorts. You just didn't see it. You didn't see a Pentecostal man. You never seen the pastor in shorts. And I, I, I wear shorts. I, my legs ain't pretty, but <laughs> me and Travis's legs are the same, you know? <laughs> Travis asked me, he said, I, I said, Travis, how do you walk on them legs? He said, very carefully. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, but anyway, they don't believe that you should so show your skin. And you know what? I, I understand that. I, I really understand that teaching. But I think a lot of times they, they, they carry it over to another way where you think you become a sinner because you've got shorts on. Uh, watch this. I, I don't have to wear shorts. No, I'm a sinner. I don't. I go ahead and tell y'all I mess up all the time. I really do. But uh, I remember one time it was lunch and uh, me and Dana, we used to go over to Mama Gay's house and that's Bobby's mom. And just a beautiful woman of God. Just amazing, really. I've never met a woman like that in my life. And uh, Dana would have shorts on and Dana walked in the house and she'd take her little hand, she'd spank Dana's legs. And he said, you cover them things up, you know. And, and, uh, and I laughed at Dana. She always spanking Dana, you know. And, uh, but she said, you cover them legs up. And they were serious about that. Because one thing that they realized is that they knew that men would be out there. Excuse me. And they knew that if the more skin that you show, the more revealing you are. And this is the truth. Men look. They really do. And a lot of times, people say all the time, do you think they know what they wear? Absolutely. I think a lot of people put on that stuff and they know what they're doing. They go with the purpose and they want people to look at them. Because why? Not because of they think in sin, but of insecurity. Right. Of insecurity a lot of times. They want to feel good about themselves. And uh, But they talk about the shorts. Don't wear shorts and wear a sleeveless shirt. Make sure it comes down to your elbow. Dresses. Y'all know this. Every time you see a little Pentecostal lady, she got a dress on. She's modest. Modest is the hottest. You know, that's what they say. So uh, they, uh, she's, got, she's got a dress on. Or they wear a skirt. 
Uh, a lot, how many of y'all have ever been to a Pentecostal church service? And uh, this messed me up the first time I was at a Pentecostal church service. Uh, somebody got slain in the spirit and they got a little white towel or a little, what do they call it, Bobby? A little quilt. And they would, they would cover they would cover people. Y'all remember that? They would, they would cover them up. And the reason why they did that is because when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, what do you say, Ryan, do you believe that? Yeah. It's not up for a vote. It's not up for a vote, okay? So, yes, I believe that. Do I think some of it's been out of order? Yes, I think some of it's been out of order. Uh, but we don't, hey, watch this. We don't tell God what He can do. God does what God wants to do, and you, you can accept it and get on board, or you'll reject it and miss out on the blessing. Amen. You really will. You'll miss out on the blessing of God. But they would cover the women up. And, uh, and I, I was at a Pentecostal church, and uh, that was going on. Matter of fact, I was preaching at it, and it just messed me up. Because I didn't understand. I've never been taught about stuff like that. So I had to learn a lot of this on my own. And you will too. Uh, but anyway, women are to wear dresses or skirts. Some require a set length. In other words, you, you can't they, they have a set length. It's at least got to be down to your knees. Can't be above the knees, okay? Uh, while others advise it should be at least down to the knees, okay? Um, this one blew my mind. Bobby, maybe you can help me out with this one. Um, it talks about facial hair. And I, I went to uh, Liberty University and I got my associate's degree. And I'll never forget this. Liberty University was established in 1971. That's when I was born. And I'll never forget this. Dr. Harold Wilmington said these words. He said, you can't have a mustache and you can't have a beard. You can't have a goatee. And I, I don't like sometimes to grow a little goatee. I, I grow like a cabbage patch dog here and there and everywhere else. But uh, I like it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't understand that. And then I started thinking. I said... Why in the world do people care about your facial hair, this, that, and the other? In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it talks about the length of a woman's hair and, uh, and all these other things. But facial hair on a man, on men, is discouraged, and their hair should be short while a woman is never cut or trimmed their hair. Do y'all realize that? As a Pentecostal, a true universal Pentecostal, is to never, ever, ever cut their hair, trim their hair. It's to stay uncut. Uh, you better not touch it. And the reason why, because most Pentecostals believe that long hair translated is to mean uncut hair in 1 Corinthians 11. Now that's, that's the wrong teaching. I'll tell you that. It's the wrong teaching. But some teach that a woman's spirituality, and listen to this, I even found this out, or even their salvation hinges on whether she abides by this teaching or not. And uh, so that kind of messed with me a little bit. <coughs> Others teach that women have has special power in their long hair. I don't know if they think they're the Samsonites. I don't know what they think that they are. Because Samson had long hair. Uh, but they think that women have special power in their long hair. They believe that it's the glory. I've heard that before. Bobby, you probably have too, that the women have they have the buns on top of their, their head. And they believe that the buns, that, that, that long hair represents the glory of God. That's their glory. And uh, so we know if Brother Tom starts saying glory, he used to have long hair, you know. So, but anyway, there are certain Pentecostal churches who mandate that women wear their hair up, they're in a bun all the time. The reason why is because a lot of the Pentecostal churches mandate that you wear your hair up long, wear it up, don't cut it, don't ever put a razor or scissors to it. Because why? They took First Corinthians chapter eleven, and you're more than welcome to read that chapter when you go home. But uh, uh, they they believe that the hair packs the glory of God. And I think that they got that teaching from Samson and from 1 Corinthians 11, even though I think it's hinged off some false teachings there. Um, Bobby talked about the no jury also. Uh, most Pentecostal churches claim that you should never wear any jewelry. And I, Bobby, you showed me some verses on that, that they adorn themselves, this, that, and the other. And that's where they get that from. They say that it adorns you, makes you stand out, makes people look at you and say, wow, who they think they are, or whatever. And you still got that today. I hear it all the time. Me and Dana live in a house up here that's it's a big, nice house. I'm not going to lie. It's nice. And, and I heard, I've heard this before. Well, who does Brother Brian and Dana think they are? Y'all bought it for us. <laughs> Y'all bought it for us. Yeah. And then people would turn right around and sit there and go, Hell, yeah, they've got four bedrooms. There's only three in the family. Who cares? Blah, 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 blah. We're going to host a missionary conference. that make you feel better? <laughs> I just don't understand it. But people get mad and they get jealous. 
and over crazy, ignorant things. Me and Dana bought a, a, a car out here, okay? A Yukon. It's nice. Watch it. I ain't going to drive something nasty. I mean, how many of y'all want to go, how go to a junk car and buy a junk, a junk car? Everybody wants stuff nice. And I'm just like you. Just like you. I like nice stuff. I want to live good. I don't believe God, God wants me to, to wear rags and this, that, and the other. We're blessed. We're living in a nation where we can have nice things. And we are blessed. Yeah, I got holes in my britches. <laughs> <laughs> some patches on it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> got holes in your britches. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, just I can afford a Yukon, I can't afford britches, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> can't do it all, you know? So, anyway, we're going to take a love offering after this is over. Okay? <laughs> I'm joking. But, uh, but we bought that car, but what people don't realize is that me and Dana have saved up and saved up and put back and we put back and we had money to pay down on it and they gave us $6,500 for our old trailblazer which I couldn't believe and we paid half on our car and we can afford it and so I mean I'm just the type of person here's the way I feel about you I want you to have the best I really do I want y'all to have the best and uh, so but anyway a lot of, a lot of that old talk and this set and the other they, they get about the jewelry and the house and the car this set and the other uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that me and Dana are working toward this. This is our, one of our on our bucket list of goals. My goal as your pastor is to preach for free. Amen. And what you don't know, I don't even know if I should tell you, I, 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 they want to give me stuff and I say, no, give it to somebody else. Because why? I want to bless people. You see what I'm saying? So money, Because money don't impress me. I just want Jesus Christ. And I tell you all that stuff, guys, to make you realize a lot of times people do this and they don't even realize what we're talking about. Right. Right. So you live for the Lord. Yeah. You, yeah. you give Him your best. Right. And if people watch this. It's been happening since Adam and Eve was in the garden. Yeah. Amen. And guess what's going to happen until we get raptured out? Wham, 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 a bunch of wham, whams. Yeah. Don't let a wham, wham get you down. Amen. Stick up for the Lord and work for the Lord. And be the best you can. And I pray in the name of God that you prosper in Jesus Christ. I really don't want you to prosper in Jesus Christ. But don't let the people who are the naysayers, who don't know nothing about your life, who don't even hang. I hear this piece all the time. Well, Elkhorn, they, they just crazy out there. Blah, blah, blah. And they doing this. And they building up a big old church. And a lot of people come out there. And it's not a family. It's not perfect. And I'm like, have you ever joined us? Have you ever come to one of our church services? No. Nah. I'm like, how do you know us then? So what I've learned in my life and what I'm going to tell you is that don't let a lie take away the truth of your life. Right. Right. Amen. Don't let somebody miss on you or talk about you because they don't really know you. I'm glad I serve a God who knows my heart and knows my intentions. Amen. And knows why I'm here. And, uh, and it just blesses me that God's for me. And God's for me. The Bible says who, who can be against you? Amen. Nobody can be against you. They may try to rise up, but they don't want to mess with you. Right. Uh, so let's really get that teaching about the jewelry. They think that it makes you stand out and you show off and this, that, and the other. It makes people lust after you. Um, i got to say this. There's some people, I don't care how much jewelry you got on, you're still a mess. How about that? It's the truth. You can, you can buy you. You can go down to wherever you want to and get all the jewelry you want to, but no, I can't even say what I'm, I'm just jewelry can't help some people. Y'all know y'all really want to laugh, you know it's true. The jewelry ain't gonna help me. Hallelujah. What um, about that crown you'll be wearing though? Yes, right. Praise God for heaven. Uh, it talks about Pentecost talk about movies and Bobby talked about the television and things like that, but movies were not allowed, period. Had a woman at my last church, her name was Miss Ethel. And uh, man, she was old school. I'm telling you, when we had a fellowship at church, she'd go, she'd smell, she'd go, can't believe y'all cooking in God's church. And I mean, she was for real. You didn't cook. You didn't have fellowship at church. If you was going to have a fellowship, you go to your house. You don't do it in God's house. And then finally, I told her, I said, what do you do about Acts chapter 2? 
When God established the church, it said they had fellowship. They went from home to home and from house to house to build to build a church to church. And they had fellowship. And uh, she, she just didn't agree with that. But she was the type of person, this woman, this is a serious businessman. And, and this is where it got serious. But she carved her name, this is the truth, carved her name in the pew at the church. And if anybody sat in her pew, <laughs> I seen her initials. <coughs> it was for real. I literally seen her go up to somebody and say, uh, young man, that's, that's Mama Ethel C. And he got up too because he knew she'd beat him up if she did. You know? <laughs> but I, I, I seen that, man. I started seeing things. Here's what, what I did. We was growing so much. The balcony was filled up and people were sitting on the floor and the choir loft was filled up. Nobody could sit nowhere. So what we did, we, we removed our pews and we put chairs down. Oh, Lord. <laughs> she didn't like me for two months. Yeah. But that's okay. Because we gained a hundred people by taking out the pews and putting chairs down. What the thing was, real quick, on a 12-foot pew, you got about seven people that would sit on a 12-foot pew. But if you get 12 seats, 12 people will sit in us. You know what I'm saying? One person. So we started gaining people, but she didn't like it. She didn't like it at all. Because she couldn't carve in, in that metal, that steel. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, um, but movies wasn't allowed. Television should not be allowed in your house. They called it the, the Satan box. They called that's where Satan lived and turned the tube on. And I agree, there may be some television programs that, that's no good. But I've got enough God in me. That I can turn it. I, I, y'all realize that you got enough God in you. You don't have to sit and watch it. So. Amen. You can turn it. Amen. But don't matter. Here's what I have found out. Here's what I found out. If somebody wants it bad enough, they'll go get it. That's right. You can't stop it. So uh, here's what amazes me too, Bob. You can probably testify to this. If you if you wanted your license as a minister in a Pentecostal church, you were asked this question: Do you have a television in your home? <laughs> That'd be one of the questions. And if you answer yes, even if it was for video purposes, your application would be denied. That, that's how serious it was that they said, do you have a, tele a minister, a pastor who said, I've got a calling on my life. Do you have a television in your house? Now, how would that work today? You see what I'm saying? Do you have a television in your house? Yeah, well, I can't accept your application to be a pastor. They base it upon a television. And again, this, these are holiness teachings that I'm telling you about, okay? Uh, you are not allowed to have a television, watch movies, or go to the movies, or anything dealing with movies or television, period. When, Bob, when, when was the first time you had a television? After you left home. You left home after he was 21. So, and some of you may have grown up in that kind of stuff too, you know? Um, and also, one other thing, the last point I want to make, they believe in King James Version Bibles only. Right. You do not get at a Pentecostal church and have, preach out of an NIV. They will call you out on it. How you know? I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know! I, didn't, I, I really, I didn't know, man. I got up with my little Bible and I was preaching and after it was over, they, they told me, they, they recommended me, they said, uh, preacher? He said, uh, what Bible were you preaching out of? Mine was different. And I'm like, NIV. And they said, KJV. KJV. And there's nothing wrong with that. But here's the way I told the pastor. And I, I know I get in trouble a lot, but I just told him, I said, I don't say turn thou to first thou Timothy. And I say this and you say thou. And I, I don't talk that stuff. I, I want to get a Bible that I get, that I understand, that I can relate to that I can communicate with. There's nothing wrong with the King James. I've got a King James. Amen. But that is not, that is not the only translation of the Bible. <coughs> Jesus Christ did not carry a King James Version Bible. Jesus Christ was not a Baptist. There's a book out called Trail of Blood saying that Jesus Christ was a Baptist. He was not a stinking Baptist. He was a Jew. A king of the Jews. Amen. That's what he was. Yep. But they think. My mom was one of them. I love my mom. And if she was here, she'd probably with me. <laughs> but mama says, Brian, you need to preach out the King James. And I said, Mama, which one you which one you read now of? King James. And I said, that's the 16th translation from the original Greek and Hebrew. 
I said, if you want to read the King James, go back to the King James 1611 edition. I know my Bible. I study this stuff. Because the 1611 edition is the original language that it came in. The Bible that you're carrying today that says King James is a 16th translation from the original King James translation. And boy, that's, that's what my mama did. But it's true. It's true. People are so, listen to me, I'm going to help you tonight. People are so concerned what Bible you read. Watch this. I'm concerned how you live. Amen. Right. Amen. I'm concerned are you holy in this yeah. house tonight. I am concerned are you living by the mandates of God and not a translation from a Bible. Right. There's many translations, but there's only one way to live, and His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the way we got to live. Amen. For God and God alone. So do I believe that the King James Version is a, is a translation? Yes. Do I believe it's the only translation? No. no. How do you know? You can look in the front of your Bible, and it will tell you if it's a paraphrase or a translation. Make sure every Bible you buy is a translation, not a paraphrase. A paraphrase, I could, I could do a paraphrase. You say, Ron, that's how you preach. I'm sorry. But a paraphrase is like I grab a pen and I said, this is what God meant when He said that. I paraphrase it in my translation. That's not good. That's not good at all. So let me go on real quick. Believe it or not, most of Pentecostal doctrine and Southern Baptist doctrines agree. Do <laughs> y'all realize that? Most of the things that a Pentecostal preaches and teaches, we believe a lot like that. Let me show you just, just for instance, some, here's some give you some examples. The Bible. Here's what I love about the Pentecostal. They would die for the Bible. Man, they, they would die for the Word of God. They believe every word that they say. Every word that proceeds from their mouth, they believe it. And I really believe that's the way we believe it. I really believe that. We believe the Bible is to be inspired and found the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. We believe that. We believe like they do when it comes to the Word. Watch this. The main things that we as, as Southern Baptists believe with the Pentecostal is we believe a lot alike. There are some things we differ on. They believe you can fall from grace. I don't and me and Bobby, we may disagree with that. But watch this, I can't help it. I can't, but this what? That don't mean he's lost and I'm saved or I'm lost and he's saved. That means we just, we just view it differently. You see what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, how many of you know, don't fight about the Bible. Amen. That's right. Listen, if somebody wants to fuss and fight with you all the time, it ain't worth fighting about. Walk away from that. Get away from that. Amen. All that does is stir up anger in you. Right. Walk away from that stuff and say, you know what? It's not up for vote. Not just read the Bible. It's already been established. Amen? Amen. So that's what you just walk away from. Because there's some people, I'm telling you, they love to fight over Scripture. Doubtful dispute. Yeah, they love all that fighting. I ain't, I'm not going to fight about it. God's already said it. They believe in the one true God. We believe... In the one everlasting, ever living, eternal God, the infinite power is in holy in name. First Corinthians talks about that back there in Scripture. They believe in the Son of God. We believe that. We believe in Jesus. Dwells in the fullness of the Godhead and, and the both bodily. Listen to this in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And here's why I differ with a lot of people. I believe all the Bible. I believe it's a whole lot of pastors and a whole lot of preachers. You know, it, it would be easy for me. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't now, but I, I, I used to have done this. And, and just preach you a good word. It's so easy. Just to get up here and say, you know what? God loves you. God bless you. Hope, I hope you live a good life. By the way, there is a hell, but we're not going to talk about that a lot. You know, I, I can sit here and I, can, I can't now, but I, I used to do that. And I, I got under conviction before I became your pastor, God just pretty much asked me a question, do you believe what you preach? <coughs> and it had to change me. And when I said yes, He said, don't leave nothing out. Amen. Don't leave nothing out. Amen. And I, can I be honest with you tonight? I'm going to take my heart and just sit here just for a moment. Sometimes I get really nervous on things that I preach about. I really do. Because I still battle that, that battle. What, what do people think? And... This, that, and the other, and it'd be so easy to be a. I want to be a politically correct pastor just to fit in and grow a church and.
to make people like you, to make people love you. But here's what I found out. The ones who truly love God and truly going to stand on the Word, whether they agree to disagree with you, they know the truth of God is real. And they'll Amen. stand. When all hell comes against you, they'll stand. And that's what I love about that man in the back right there. Travis Gilbert. Amen. And I can say this because I, I know him. Now I know he, Travis Norman's not here when he works like a dog. <laughs> he does a, a lot of great things. But I'm going to tell you one thing. This is the truth. Me and Travis didn't always agree on a lot of things. We still don't. But one thing I know, and I praise God for this in this house tonight, that if I need anything, 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 I can call him Travis Gilpin and it will get done. I, I can say that. I don't agree with everything Travis does. He don't agree with everything I do. But we're on the same team. Amen. Maybe. See, what I'm trying to tell you is that a lot of times in our life, we get so caught up in translations and what church you go to and how do you feel and is that working out? I'm not worried about that. I'm concerned about your heart, your spirit, your life and a holiness in Jesus Christ. That's what I'm concerned about tonight. See, we do believe in the Holy Spirit. Where I believe in the Holy Spirit is this. He's got me. He lives in me. Without Him, I can't walk, I can't talk, I can't function. But He does more than that. The Holy Spirit is a gift. Don't y'all listen to me real quick. I'm going to teach on this in just a few minutes. He is a gift. The problem with the Holy Spirit in a lot of churches today, they're not opening the gift. Amen. Now hear me. They're not opening the gift. And you can sit and you say, there's my gift. There's the Holy Spirit. And I know He's in me, but unless you open that gift, and expose that gift, it'll never work on your behalf. It'll never work on your behalf. And how I know that is because I've learned some valuable lessons as your pastor. And thank God, I remember the first Sunday that the Holy Spirit got a hold of me here at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I remember it. I told Dana, I mean, ask her. I said, Dana, pack the bags. Pack the bags. I said, they're going to fire me. I did. I was scared to death. And that afternoon, I had a deacon's meeting. <laughs> we had a deacon's meeting. And I was scared to death. I walked in there and I'm like, oh gosh, you know what, 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 what are we going to talk about? And what's going on? And here's what God told me to ask every one of those deacons around that wall and everywhere in that room. Here's the one question I asked them. I said, do you believe what happened today? Do you support what happened today? Are you willing to grow this church with the Holy Spirit growing it? Not me, but the Holy Spirit. And every one of them. Some of them said, I don't understand. That's wisdom. That's okay. I can take it. I didn't understand. But they all said this. I support you. I love you. You're a pastor. I don't understand. But who am I? I love it. Who am I to tell the Holy Spirit what He can do and what He cannot do? Amen. When they said that, I'm telling you from here, to hear. And we're still learning. Everybody under this teaching tonight, we're all students. We're still learning, praise God. Because if you've got it all figured out, please help me. And if you're looking for a perfect church, don't join this one. Because if you did find a perfect church, you don't need to join because you'll mess it up. You'll mess it up every time. So I believe in all the Bible. I believe. I know we say we do, but when the Holy Spirit starts working, we question. And I'm trying to get to the point and say these words, God, teach me. When I don't understand, teach me. And God will teach you. Go to the Word of God. Listen to me. If, you wanna, if, you, if you've got an answer how the Spirit is moving, go to the Word. Go to the Bible. God will God teach you. He'll bless you. And that's the way I've learned in my life. Because I have, and me and Bobby's been in services together where it was disorder. Where people would get up and they would speak in tongues and wouldn't be an interpreter. You know what I did? Get out. I don't hang around with you. I've learned. I've got to guard what God's given me. I've got to guard it. And you, we got, we got to guard it in this house tonight. Six minutes. Y'all ready to be an auctioneer real quick. <laughs> I took, but what we did for a Southern Baptist, we believe that when you ask Jesus Christ into your life, you not only get Jesus and the Father, but you get the Holy Spirit. And I said, we as Southern Baptists believe that it's a package deal. Now, here's where I 
differ with Southern Baptist. Southern Baptists believe when you get the Holy Spirit, you got all that you ever need. And I understand you do have all that you ever need. But here's where I differ a lot of times. If you don't open that gift, you'll sit there in that blue, blue pew, you'll sit in that blue chair, you'll be 80, 90 years old, this, that, and the other. You've been a great person, you've tithed, you went to Sunday school, you've been a great Christian, but you never opened your gift. I don't believe that, that if you've got more of God, I believe it's that God's got more of you. You see what I'm saying? Because the more God has of you, the less you'll have of you. You see what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily that, that I think that they're wrong and we're right. I believe you've got to work the Spirit, just like your marriage. If you're a married person in this house tonight, if you just want to play no more in your marriage, go home, sit in the recliner, and turn TV on, and eat popcorn together every once in a while, and kumbaya, and God bless you, and have a date night once a year, and everything. I, that don't work. But I'm talking about my marriage. I got a gift. Her name is Dino. D I N O. Her name is Dino. <laughs> she didn't look it. But that's true. And you got to open your marriage. You got to open your gifts. You got to open what God has given. You got to see what your gift is. Because everybody here, the Bible says that God has at least given every Christian one gift. What's your gift? 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 See, you got to open your package. To see what your gift is. Y'all get this tonight? So many Christians. Here we are. We're hoarders. That's mine. You ain't getting it. That's mine. That's my gift. It's pretty, isn't it? There's something special in here. I can shake it and air it. And they never open their gift. They're, they're hoarders. They're Christian hoarders. But if you start opening the gift and seeing what's in there and saying, oh man, God has given me the gift pastor church. I never thought, I promised you guys, I was not the most likely to be a pastor in my senior class. <laughs> Tell me. No. I was not a public communicator, <coughs> a speaker. I wasn't. I passed out in book reports. But now, I'm 41 years old, and I'm starting to keep unwrapping my gift, and God keeps giving me more. And more. I never thought I'd have a radio program that reaches over 40,000 people weekly. Never thought that. You say, Brian, you bragging? The Bible says if you boast, boast in the Lord. I boast in Jesus Christ in that right there. Right. Boast in that. Had a man, his name is Larry. I, I seen him Monday at, at school. I ate lunch with Destiny. He don't go to church. He's lost. And I uh, used to work with him. And uh, he said, man, every Sunday I listen to y'all's program church and uh, we, we got a program if you don't know on Big Dog from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock Greg Ford gets on there and he plays music and he kind of reads the Bible and prays and reads to give scripture and 11 o'clock from 11 to 12 our live our services over here are live on well, not live but they're a week behind at uh, the Big Dog and we're getting 40,000 hits on that and this man said I listen to that every week and here's what he said it blessed my heart he said this word he said you know what he said, you've almost convinced me. I never had nobody tell me that. You've almost convinced me. And I didn't know how to I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to react. I'm like, you're going to be convinced. I said, God's real, Larry. And God loves you. And I really believe with all my heart that one day Larry will walk through these doors. I really believe that. And I need y'all to pray for that. And the last thing I want to tell you is this. And I'm not bragging on Elkhorn. I'm bragging on the God in Elkhorn. I was eating some Chinese last week, me and Tommy Hughes. And uh, First United Methodist on Main Street, they had two of their gals up there eating. And uh, I wish they were here tonight. I wish they, they could tell it so much better than I can. But uh, after it was over with, they come up and they said, uh, Brother Brian, can I talk to you just for a moment? I'm like, yeah. They said, was y'all's ears burning last week? And I said, girlfriend, my ears burn. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she said, no. She said, this was some good stuff. And listen to this, Judy. She said, last week we had a business meeting at our church. And she said, we, we started thinking about it. She said, we're not growing. We need to pray for that church. She said, we're not growing. We're stagnant. 
And she said, we're not reaching no young people. And she said, so we decided to make Elkhorn the church that we pattern our ministry at after here at First United Methodist Church. So guess who's coming to our leadership meeting next week? They're sending their pastor. I, I, this is crazy. And their leadership to here to say, guys, what in the world are y'all doing? And I can't wait. I cannot wait just to tell them, say, man, listen, we just love God. And I believe that with all my heart. I'm a mess. My God, from the top of my head, Joe, to the bottom of my feet, every day it's a full-time job, just me and Jesus Christ, me by myself. But I'm telling you, God is alive. He's doing something good. He, he's, he's so good. He's so deep. He's so rich. Yes. And, don't, and I'm telling you guys, like, please don't get so dogmatic and don't get so judgmental. And don't worry about what everybody else's business is going on in their life. Pray for that person. And I promise you, if we do these things, God will continue to keep blessing us. And so I'm excited about that. I want to share that with you because I, I just, I'm excited. Because I never thought I could be a pastor of a church that's vibrant. I, I, you know what I always thought? I figured I'd be a pastor someday. But I never, I never really dreamt of this stuff. Y'all are a dream come true. Brother Man, you're a dream come true, Brother Man. That we can do ministry together. Never thought this would happen. Never thought this would happen. I don't want to get all mushy on you. That's just truth. Listen to this. I'm done. We believe in repentance. We believe in water baptism. We believe in divine healing. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got a pastor in front of you that if you're sick in your bones, I'll lay my hands upon you. I will anoint you with oil. I will bind that old strong spirit out of that life. I will bind that sickness in your life. And I will, I will command in the name of Jesus Christ God to loose His healing in your life. Now listen to me. I don't heal. He does. Yes. I want to clarify. Listen, people say all the time, well, we got to get to Brother Brian. No, you don't. I'm just a man. Yeah. But I know him. I know the man. And I believe the Word. We believe in divine healing. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ that God wanted Robbie McCauley to get out of that wheelchair and walk. Robbie McCauley could get up this Sunday and walk yes, that out. I believe that. I believe that. My mama had stage 3 cancer. And she had, she had blisters and boils on her body where the radiation went in and burnt her body. This was a long time ago. And I remember my mama, me walking in the house, my mama crying. And she said, Brian, she said, you got any of that oil with you? And I was like, yeah, I got some oil out in the truck. She said, go get it. And I walked back in the house and my mama said, you know what? I have a hard time believing all this healing stuff. And she said, I got to get some, I got to get healed. And all I know how to do is to call on the name of Jesus. Will you anoint me, hallelujah? Will you anoint me and lay your hands upon me and pray a blessing over my life? And I'll tell you, this is honest God's truth tonight. My mom, I took her back to Tucker County Hospital. There was a bus out there that was going to James Cancer Center in Louisville, Kentucky. I'll never forget this. My mom was in the back seat. She looked at me and she waved. And she took off. And I remember about three hours later, my cell phone rang. My mom said, oh, Brian Keith. Oh, Brian Keith, i got to tell you something. And she said, they can't find no cancer in my body. That's the honest of God's truth. I say to you today, that's the honest of God's truth. George heard me the same way. Yeah. I, I wish I could just beck and call. And just have a big old horn that sit there and go, God's alive. He's alive. He loves you. He loves you. I wish I could give that word to the whole world. Because the world's been beat down enough. God, they need to see Jesus. I feel that in my spirit tonight. We, they need to see the Lord. And you've got a God in you that is big. Yes, yes, is. Don't you doubt that God. Y'all keep trucking. If I die tonight, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you don't, I'm going to come back and Holy Ghost kick you. <laughs> you need it. we got to keep trucking. we got to keep believing. And even if it don't, some, I really believe this, man, I feel it in my heart, I can't shut up, but it's just the way it is. Some of you are right now to a point you got a major decision in your life. I don't know who I'm ministering to. you got a major decision in your life. Don't give up. Amen. You got me? Don't give up. Don't give up. I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't give up. That's said, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap. Amen. Amen.